Warning, this show contains childish adult content and is intended for immature, mature audiences. Listener discretion is advised. The views spoken are ours and ours alone, not those of any other bugger. If you're easily offended, we strongly suggest finding another podcast. Everybody neat and pretty, then on with the show. Welcome to another edition of Diz After Dark. I'm Nick. I'm Paul W. I'm Chris R. And I'm Amanda, aka Boston White. Indeed. Uh, Mr. Dolan has been called away um, at the last minute, so he's not able to join us tonight. And uh, Craig is uh, ready to depart. Pretty much, he's driving a train home uh, to Liverpool from London, so uh, he's not joining us. He's He's always making as many appearances this series as uh, Mr. Boniface, which uh, is uh, is something. But um, yeah, unfortunately, although I tried to start off a little bit light, um, we don't want to start off too light because um, of what's been happening in Orlando um, within the last uh, about 20 hours now, probably less. Um, I'm sure most of you would have, would have heard by now, but... Um, Islamic State have now claimed responsibility, so that's kind of newish news, um, for an attack on uh, a nightclub in the Orlando area, uh, which has left 50 people killed and injured at least 53 others. Um, which, uh, I mean, it was it was a gay nightclub. I don't know if... You know, it, it, I suppose it's pretty too early to say yet if, if that was the exact intention, if it was just a random night spot that was, was chosen... Um, you know, it, it's still probably a bit too early to say, but um, you know, they they're kind of going. It's the the worst shooting in in US history. Um, that's what they kind. That's the kind of victory that they're proclaiming. Um, and the fact that you know, a lot of pe- I mean, not everybody that listens to this podcast has been to Orlando. Um, I mean, some you know practically lived there, but. You know, not everybody has ties to the Orlando area, but we do have an awful lot of listeners that that do. And whether that's them living there or you know just being there on on, on vacation, um, they will have some some ties to that area, and we'll probably know somebody that's affected. But if you don't know someone that's affected in that area, the fact that it's it's happened somewhere that people generally have such uh, such special memories about is I think what makes it so sad um, and it, there's nothing really it, there's not like a positive spin you can put in it really I mean it, it's a completely tragic situation and you know I think all our hearts go out to anyone that's been a, affected by it and um, just 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 senseless needless um, you know I, I mean I, I suppose the only positive thing you can say is that um, it, it potentially could have been worse um, and that is probably the, the only positive thing you can say about the situation um, just 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 terrible uh, I, I don't know if anyone wants to kind of add to that at all or no only that you know our thoughts and prayers on the uh, podcast goes out to anyone affected by it yeah uh, and I think the other thing as well is that, um, you know, and, and anyone that's kind of experienced this, I mean, I was quite close to um, when we were bombed in London, 7-7, um, is that you have to just try and dust yourself off and carry on. Because if you don't, they've won. And, you know, that's that's no good for anybody. And I know when um, the panic attacks happened, how that affected people. Um, I'm not going to name people um, because that, that's their own business and, and everything. But you know, there were people that I know pulled out of trips to Disneyland Paris because they didn't feel safe. And um, you know, on one hand, it's a completely logical, um, 
you know reason to, to want to pull out of a holiday which is supposed to be something you really look forward to um but you kind of do worry a little bit about you know if, if something else could happen but if we all do that all the time uh we'd never enjoy the things in life that we do like to do and as i said they've won so all i can say is that i hope that people there and people that are planning to go there this year um you know kind of spit in the face of of uh daesh or, or whatever they are um and stick two fingers up and say i'm not going to let you stop what i want to do and, and carry on because i think that's the only way of um of showing that we're not going to let them win really um so so that's it and it's sad that we have to do these kind of things because what again you know going back to we had to do something sooner when the paris stuff happened but it's it's too big and it's too important and it affects too many people that it's hard to avoid really so we do have to mention it and and the only thing now we can do after that is is say in the same way that we said you've got to carry you know dust yourself and carry on that's what we're going to do so you know now normal programming will be resumed um hopefully we can make you laugh a little bit um and you know start to put things right again really i think that's it so with that being said and the fact that i said the show's got to start as it normally does um is anybody drinking no i've got a cup of tea it's still a drink it counts <laughs> so it's, it's perfectly fine it's perfectly fine <laughs> Uh, Paul. Yeah, I'm just. I've just got a glass of Coke. <laughs> this is gonna be, going well. Going well, uh, Mr. Ripley. Um, I'm on the tap. You're on the tap, right? I'm. Yeah. I've. I've. Um, I saw this new drink. This new. This new beer. So I, I'm drinking a beer tonight. It's called the Green Gecko. Ooh. Um, and I suppose the only connection really going back to what we said last week, was about the gecko population in the Orlando area, which is bloody loads of them. So um, I'm going to be the alcoholic one, I'm afraid. But uh, it was too good to pass up. It looked, it looked like quite a, a nice IPA, so hang on. That's quite nice, actually. Yeah. Okay. Right, so we've done that. Um, and now... We're going to be quite heavily featured on news. Does anybody in particular want to go first? No. <laughs> Perfect. In that case, I'll leave Josh. Um, so we had a soft opening this week. Not in Disney. So we're going what? To, we're going to move slightly down the road. Well, yeah, come on. <laughs> what did you expect? The soft opening of Avatar Land. <laughs> it's gonna yeah, be pushed exactly. push back and push back and push back. The soft opening of a new popcorn cart near Smash Mountain or something. <laughs> it, will, it it will happen. It will happen one day. Um, but they have, and I think it's still in soft opening. I don't think it's officially still open yet. Um, but uh, the new Kong attraction. Mm. Yeah. I... Island. So I have talked lots of times in the past about how Kong Frontation was the the thing that first made me want to go to America before anything else. Seeing that advertised on telly when Universal used to have that as the the main kind of attraction to advertise their theme parks. That was it. I was obsessed with King Kong when I was a kid because of that. Seeing that ride. And um, yeah, it's quite funny. Like It wasn't the films. It was a ride. The rides made me go back and watch the films. And, I'll have you know, even King Kong lives. Yeah, I like that. I don't like it now. Uh, Amanda, you're laughing like... <laughs> you're, you're laughing Sorry. like you've seen it. Have you seen it? No. So well, it's not very good. <laughs> oh, no, it's absolutely <laughs> bloody terrible. Okay. Um, it stars Linda Hamilton from Terminator and Terminator 2. Um, because she was still hot property at that time. And it, in a nutshell, is basically, it carries on from where King Kong ended, the remake, so at the bottom of the Twin Towers. But he's not dead yet. They give him the world's biggest artificial heart. Wow. Okay. So, like, immediately, sounds like a masterpiece, right? But no... 
you're still going to be wrong. Um, and then they go back, they take him back um, to the island where he, he basically meets Lady Kong. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, and this is all off the top of my head. I have not watched this film in uh, at least 22 years. And I own it on DVD. I own it on DVD and I still couldn't get myself to open the packaging. It's on a shelf somewhere, still wrapped up. I'll have to find it. Mick, and can I just quickly say, I never please. watch a film less than 7.5 IMDb rating. <laughs> and this is a 3.7. <laughs> On the on the oh. on the Shitner scale, yeah, yes, that probably That's sounds about right. Down. Yeah, I mean it is terrible. The effects were terrible, but when I was like six, it sounded like and looked like an amazing thing. It's only when you go back and, and watch something when you're a bit older that you realise how bad it was, or just read about it. So just reading about it was enough for me to go. You know what? I've still got those rose tinted glasses for this film. I'll leave those in the drawer. <laughs> I'm not going to ruin it. It's, it's a terrible, terrible film, but that's that's where they're kind of going with it at the time. So um, even that I liked uh, again at the time. So Kong was a massive part of my life, and I, I when I found out that Kong was closing in Orlando, um, I I looked into trying to go, and it's a good job I didn't go because I can't drive, and I didn't know where. You know, I didn't realize how big like Orlando was. So even if I got a place on iDrive, I still would have struggled to get to Universal. But my big thing in life is I never got to go on confrontation. Um, so, oh, no, really? Yeah, yeah. And I said, that's the, that's the big regret because I even looked into going to Hollywood. Oh. Whilst I know it was a different attraction, um, you know, it, like, it still had the animatronic and everything like that. And so we were looking at flights. Ed to go on. Huh? And... I don't know why I was so scared of it, but even just going in the queue when you were going through like the tram station, I was yeah. terrified. Yeah, but that's that's the atmosphere, isn't it? It's trying to get you like petrified. That's the whole idea. Um, but we, we were it. looking at flights. We were looking at flights to go to Hollywood, and then it burned down. Oh. That's when the uh, the the, um, the courthouse caught fire. So the Back to the Future set was ruined as well as uh, as Kong, and. Um, yeah, and when they put Kong 360 in, I was like, okay, that's not really... I, I, I get it, they've replaced it with something, but it wasn't right. So, I kind of was excited for this ride quite a lot, but wasn't sure what I was going to expect. Now, uh, we have some people that are going to be going later this year. Even on this show. So... Um, I'm sure not everyone has done this, but has anyone other than myself actually seen any videos from the new attraction? I'm not yes. doing it. Yes. Okay. So we've got one one quite strong opinion already. Um, so we'll come back to that, Amanda. What's your take on it, Mr. Ripley? Well, uh, I'll say something controversial. I haven't been on it yet, obviously. I've only seen it on YouTube. Mm. And most of the comments I've read are positive. But there's still a lot of screens in it. Yeah. I, I'm totally in agreement. You know, and that old King Kong ride, it was all animatronics. It was all physical sets. It was all, you know, you was literally on the streets of New York. It was fantastic. Mm. And, no. you know, I've done <laughs> King Kong 360 at Hollywood, and it does look like the exact same video. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. It, so, like that. it is. Oh, you know, yeah. it's... I don't know. And then they have put animatronics in there, but the animatronic they put in there doesn't look as good as the one they had originally. Yeah, I so. I, I agree with that with that statement. Um, Amanda, what's your <laughs> you first at the gate with an opinion? So what? So what? As of what you've seen, um, what's kind of like your fear on it? The queue looks incredible. It looks amazing. The reason I'm not watching it is because I want to be surprised when I get there. Okay. And it's taking a lot of willpower because if anyone saw my Facebook the other day, you'll know that I was watching a periscope of the queue and literally as they got on the ride to go through the doors, it cut off and I was devastated but also kind of happy because I do want it to be a surprise. <laughs> but what I've seen so far of the queue looks amazing. It looks so good. That witch animatronic is amazing. And the worm. 
Worms weird, but it looks really weird. But I think the theming of it, everything, and I must have watched about 20 videos of the queue already. <laughs> <laughs> and then I just wow. stop it before it gets on the ride. <laughs> but they, they have actually got characters in there, haven't they? Amanda? Yeah, but I haven't seen one yet. Apparently say. there's only one. Really? Yeah, from what I've read, there's only one scare actor in there. Tim, uh, I watched a video with Tim Tracker and he said there's only one oh. at the moment. So it's a bit like the Highlander then? Yeah. Apparently. And, and apparently he said that it was very easy to read where the scare actor was as well. Right. Was there a neon sign that scared the scare actor here? Well, in sc- by the insert bit, scare actor here. Yeah, you may as well have put up a sign <laughs> saying it's, it's here. So now, see, a lot of people have been. Um, I don't know why I got high pitched there. Sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's, uh, a lot of people have been getting quite uh, uppity about that announcement that there's going to be characters in the in the queues. Um, now, I, I I can only talk about my experience, okay? But um, every time I've been on the mummy, um, there have been people in the queues trying to scare you. Hmm. Uh, the first one went on, it was, um, you know, cause it's like, um, what are they? Are they tour guides? Would you say they're tour guides that are in the queue? Um, I don't think I've ever been scared in the queue. Yeah, but that's because you're a stronger man than me. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't remember anyone <laughs> popping out or anything. It wasn't that they popped out, and Amanda, if you've had this, you can tell me your version of this, but... Um, so I think he was, he was supposed to be like a um, guide around the pyramid um, oh, right. or around the tomb. And he had a stick, like a big kind of staff. Um, and what he'd do is he'd wait till kind of people would pass and then you'd have to stop because of uh, like backlog or whatever. And then he'd slam it down the floor really hard while shouting boo. And he just made people jump because they weren't expecting it. <laughs> or he would hide slightly where it was darker so you couldn't see him as he come around the corner but he could clearly see you were coming up to him and he'd jump out but that could just have been somebody having a bit of fun that was just Craig in the queue <laughs> I'd have seen him I'd have seen him Amanda what was your experience mine wasn't anything like that it was like in September sometimes when you go it'll say 20 minute queue and there's nobody at all in there so you're mm. just kind of messing with all the stuff that's in there as you're walking around and it's the guys that just work in the queue. They'll yeah. just kind of pop out. like, And it is just for a laugh, really. Yeah. I don't think that they're meant to do it. Yeah, that's it. So, yeah, so it could just be, um, rather than employing a, a character for that role, as it were, that they, they're just uh, a few people while it's quite having a bit of fun. Okay. Yeah. Well, see, the thing is, this is big news. I'll tell you how I know. Um, on our um, HHN unofficial blog, we posted uh, an article about how Halloween Horror Nights has now affected, you know, Universal as a whole. So they're now thinking long term about where they can put Halloween Horror Nights stuff, and that the queue would have scare actors for King Kong, and that it might be used in the future for Halloween Horror Nights. That article got basically all the hits we had in May and uh, April in one day. Wow! So people were just sharing it and discussing it i mean we had something like 400 comments you know it, so and it was such a broad spectrum of people as well discussing it about how either they were absolutely right to do it or how you know how dare they you know how could we take our children in there if these people are going to be jumping out and scaring us you know our kids you know won't be able to sleep and all this blah blah blah, blah. so it, it is big news i mean it seems to be a lot of people talking about it yeah, I'm surprised by the reaction it's caused people. I really am. And I'm talking from grown-ups as well. I'm not talking about people going, oh, think of the children. Like, yeah. adults going, oh, no, I'm not going back to this. people trying to scare you. It's like, <laughs> the ride itself surely is supposed to cause a bit of that. Full stop. I'm just thinking mm. about the animatronics that they've got in there. Mm. Surely they're going to be pretty scary as it is. I haven't seen the video. The, the worms and the, as you said, the witch is it's fairly creepy in, in itself well i haven't seen i've got to watch that because i i've purposely just watched the ride video but um i didn't realize there'd be so much in the, in the queue to see like that so i will go back and watch that but um you know i i know because obviously 
it, it, well, I think this is kind of weird, okay? So, I got with Kong 360 that that was based on the Peter Jackson film. Yeah. Right? And that made sense, because at the time, it was relatively new. And it didn't set the world on fire, but it did reasonable business. Um, I think it was a little bit underwhelming to what they were expecting, but, you know, it, it was successful enough. So... I, I understood the logic, especially as really Confrontation and the Hollywood version were based on that 1977 Kong film. So it, it was kind of time for it to be updated. I get that. But I'm surprised that they've seemed to have based it again on the 2005 film when well, Skull Island comes out next year. Yeah, so that was a big problem. This film was meant to come out at the same time as the ride opening. Right. So there's been some huge problems behind the scenes. I personally have no idea what, but they were meant to come out at the same time. Right. But they've still based it on that original attraction. They have. Now, it'd be interesting to see, because, I mean, I've got to be honest, I I had seen uh, Kong 360 um, probably when it came out. So what was that, 2010, 11, that opened? 10. 10. It was 2010, because... It was open when we went on our honeymoon. Right, okay. Um, yeah, so that's that's when that opened. And I remember watching the video then because obviously I was, I was interested. But I've, I've never gone back to watch it since, to be honest. So I knew some of the video was, was similar. I remembered some of the video, but I didn't remember all of it. So if it is the same video, do you think they can update that? Do you think that after Kong... Uh, King was it was it called Kong of Skull Island? Is that what the title is? I think it's just called Skull Island, isn't it? Okay. Because I think it's meant to be a prequel. Right. I, I've I've I know I've seen it as a few different things. That's why I'm not too sure. Um, I suppose until we see a trailer, we probably won't know <laughs> what the final thing is anyway. But whatever it's called, I wonder if they can then change the footage and update it to have some of the actors um, in it. I mean, to be honest with you, if, if Disney can swap out Soaring, I mean, I can't see why they couldn't, you know, update or change the video for it. You just need, surely all you need to do is, is have the aspect ratio, right? So it fits around the, the screens and anything that's around those screens, if there's anything around those screens. That's about it, surely. But it would make sense to me, like, to do that. It's not like they've got this deal like they've got with Spielberg with Peter Jackson where they have to keep stuff or, you know, for a certain amount of time, surely it would make sense for them to protect their own IPs and update things as and when, especially if it's easy to do as that. And I think, you know, th- that's the other issue as well, which Chris nailed on quite early, which is, yeah, but it's screens. Mm. And it is. And I've got to be honest, like a lot of things, when they were releasing all those teasers a few weeks ago now uh, and they said oh we've got an animatronic and you saw a bit of him he was like oh, okay but I've got to be honest with you um, and again we haven't seen this in, re- in real life so it could be different but certainly from what I've seen thus far I was very underwhelmed by the animatronic well it, it I mean when you rem- compare it against the original I know the original used to break down all the time mm. but I mean, it was pretty much from the knees up. It was a a full working, you know, five foot story tall gorilla. <laughs> you know, this one, I don't know if it's just a head or what it is, but... And does it have banana breath? That's what the world wants to know. Some well, people so have said that, yeah. That's what I want to know, certainly. Um... But the thing is, long term, I was talking to um, former Disney Imagineer Jason Sorrell the other day. Mm. He's now working at Universal, and he's the one that has created the Jimmy Fallon ride. And, you know, he's a great guy, Jason. I have faith in him, and it'll be a great attraction, but it's going to be screens-based. And then once that opens, the following year, they're going to have Fast and Furious. Again, that's going to be completely all screens. Yeah, And, and based on the same ride again. And based yeah. on the same damn terrible, terrible <laughs> ride that Hollywood has. So, no. Isn't that bad? Oh, oh. It's, it's horrendous. Oh, now, it's again, I've not been on it because uh, I haven't been to Hollywood. But um, that ride video, I think, there's quite a few ride videos if you look on YouTube. But it, it kind of gives everything away. And 
Do you know what it reminded me of, actually? Do you remember um, in, like, the early 90s? Um, well, I mean, this, this only really applies if you played, played arcade games. To, but do you remember, like, when you used to have shooting games? So you'd have, like, Terminator, the arcade game, and, and Aliens, the arcade yeah. game. And you used to have, like, the gun that you could turn a little bit. Yeah. You couldn't take it out of holster. You could turn it a little bit, and yeah. you just had to shoot whatever was there. It was that kind of crappy 3D effect. Yeah, where, where the they characters look... flat. Yeah, yeah, where they're not 3D, they're just they're just flat objects. Well, and I can is... see how they've done it because that's actually what they're doing. They're projecting it onto cardboard cutouts and whatnot. But it looks bloody terrible. And if that if they are thinking that's what they're going to stick into uh, Florida, I feel really really sorry because I unashamedly. Um, I'm a big fan of the Fast and Furious films because I do like occasionally crappy films. Well, we know with King Kong 2 or whatever it was you were talking about. Uh, King Kong lives, get it right. (laughs) Um, (laughs) But but I do. I mean, they're they're cheesy in their action base and they've got a little bit of plot and that's enough. Um, But they're just entertaining popcorn movies. But it deserves better than that. It does deserve better than that crappy thing they've got at the moment. And uh, the fact they're making such a big deal out of it as well, I think, is the worst thing. But honestly, the footage, is, it, it's almost like they've downloaded it off YouTube. <laughs> it's, it's really poor. Yeah. I mean, the and King the... Kong 360 is, what, two, three, five years older? And that's better quality. Yeah. So how does this happen? Yeah. And the main bulk of the Fast and the Furious ride as well is, is all CGI. It yes. is. Yeah. It's, n- it's not even the characters. And, and so there's like, the there's like a C, like a CGI rock driving alongside you, what? and it just looks really bad. Oh, man, you should go and check it out. Honestly, it's, <laughs> yeah, it, sounds it's like almost, it. It's almost worse than King Kong Lives, and it's much shorter. Um, <laughs> but tell me how Spider Man is what 15, 17 years old, and that's like their Concord, and everything that's come since is not as good as Spider Man. Yeah, in terms of screens. And I, I disagree slightly because I do. I mean, I, I think it's a very, very close fight between um, Wizarding World's uh, Forbidden Journey and Spider Man as to what is my preferred um, screen based ride. Can you, can anyone hear the rain in the background, by the way? Yeah, I can just about. Jump. Yeah, it's it's really chucking. We've got the tropical storm coming now. That's what always happens. I'll close the window. Um, get out of the pub garden. Um, yeah. Um, sorry, I've lost my train of thought. Yeah, I mean, it, the, the Fast and Furious thing it does... Um, the thing that gets me as well, when you say about the CGI stuff, is that in the films, most of it's practical. Even the really dangerous stuff that you think is clearly it must be CGI is actually real. So the fact that so much of the ride is is animated is quite uh, quite sad. Well, the, um, a film that I've been telling everybody to go and see at the moment is Krampus because I strongly believe it's going to be a house this year, mm. Halloween Horror Nights, and that has virtually no CGI in it. And that's yeah. a you know a very new film where they've gone back to basics and built actual puppets and props and. You know, physical sex. Yeah, but look at Star Wars. The reason why, and obviously that's that has does have a lot of effects in it as well. But when you compare the new ones we talked about before, the you know episode seven to episode one, two, and three, the fact that the sets were real made such a difference to how the film felt mm. compared to the fact that everything before was green screen and they were acting against tennis balls and not knowing what the you know the background was going to look like properly. Mm. Um, it does make a, a massive difference. I, I, you know, I've heard good things about Krampus, um, and it's got Joel McHale in it, so therefore it's always going to get a pass from me. Um, but I will, I will have to check that out. But um, yeah, you're right about Spider-Man and the age of it. Um, and and I don't see how. Yeah, I don't. I don't see how any, anything's going to beat it. I mean, you know, people have said Transformers is really good, but again it just feels like it, it's it's trying to do what Spider-Man did and not improving on it. Mm. It's like Ratatouille. Like everyone got so excited when Ratatouille went into Disneyland Paris. 
and I came like, and I'd heard so much, uh, you know, all these, all these amazing opinions. Oh, how yeah, great it was! And I went on it ten times in a row. It was that good. And I come off it, and I was like, "That's just a crappy Spider-Man." <laughs> like, even though it got it got built up so much because Paris hadn't had a decent ride put in for years, mm. and everybody built it up. Oh, look, Disney have given us some money to build something. We're going to have to rave about it, and it's just a basic scream ride yeah, and I mean the thing is like you know there are bits I mean like to me it does feel very similar to Spider-Man in that you know you've got the practical bits um, you've got the you've also got things like the heat and, and stuff like that as well so there are those bits that kind of pay homage to it and the fact that it's trackless is also quite inspiring but I was just like Spider-Man did it better Spider-Man did it 10 years before in fact Possibly, when the rest of you open, 2012, maybe? 2013? So, yeah, quite a long time before, actually. Um, probably longer than 10 years. Um, and I, I don't see... I, I don't see the, why they keep focusing on screen wise, except possibly it's cheaper to build. But surely people are going to get bored at some point and not going to take it anymore. Mm. Well, the thing is, what, what's coming down the line after Fast and Furious? I mean, nobody quite knows now they've put their sights on building a third park. But, you know, they have just bought all of the DreamWorks um, characters and they've done a deal with Nintendo. But again, with Nintendo, one would think it probably would be all again screen-based attractions. Well, Nintendo, you kind of expect it because all their games are screen-based yeah, attractions aren't they really in, in their own way? Um, but yeah, I know what I know. I know what you mean. Uh, Warcraft, that's flopped. It's not flopped. Like yeah, well, yes, it has, but, but n- where it's mattered, it yeah. hasn't flopped. And China is the new America. I mean, did you hear that thing this week that Disney are now making are going to be making films to China? Yeah. Which basically, unofficially, Tron frees back in action, quite clearly. You, you've heard it here first. I, I'm breaking that story. I've also made it up, but I'm breaking it <laughs> because no, well, no, think about it. You know, Tron was obviously popular enough in China that they built a coaster devoted to it. They've got all the cool merchandise for it. Makes sense to me. Maybe they will. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so so Warcraft has, has become a massive hit in China. So a, a sequel will be guaranteed, I'm pretty sure. Um, it will probably have a much lower budget, but but that's that's okay. Um, I've not seen it. I, I've I've got no opinion on it. I I've never played the games or anything like that. So, but I think the fact that they you know more and more you know as years go by. Um, they're not having this. Um... Of course, beer's really getting to me. I'm losing my train of thought. I'm gonna stop <laughs> drinking. Um, yeah, the, the fact that uh, they've spent so so long trying to get Lord of the Rings, and it's been on the table, it's been off the table, it's been on the table, off the table, and it seems to have gone nowhere. They're getting this third gate. They've got Nintendo. To me, I, I think they were hoping. Warcraft was going to be their Lord of the Rings. I it think that well was their, 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 their aim. That's how they were kind of hyping it up to be. Um, the deal they've got with Legacy, um, uh, Legendary Pictures rather, hmm. um, is that uh, Universal can take properties that they both work on and put them into the theme parks, be it Halloween Horror Nights or attractions. So they do have the option. Yeah, because aren't Legendary behind Kong? The they, Kong I now. think they are, yes. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. Yeah, it was a universal property and it got moved over, didn't it? Oh. Yeah. Okay. Okay, all right. Well, look, we've been talking about Kong way too bloody long. We're gonna, people are going to start thinking this is the unofficial Universal Lando podcast. Of course they're not. They're not, <laughs> they're not actually going to do that, of course. One, the hosts are better. But secondly, <laughs> because we, we now have Universal After Dark. We do. So they probably just think it's an episode of that. It's not. We are going to go straight on to Disney right now after word from our first sponsor. Who's doing it? 
<laughs> well, we don't. I mean, to be fair, I say a word from our first <laughs> sponsor. They they don't act. They leave us do that. Um, <laughs> and of course, uh, one of our sponsors, someone on this team knows very well, Mr. Logan Logan Seculo. Yes. Um, Scare Zone podcast comes out twice a month. Um, we've got one coming out. Um, so if this comes out on Monday, it should be ready to download on Monday. Um, we're discussing everything to do with uh, Chance, the new Yay. icon. Um, we're also discussing uh, a bit about what we think about Walking Dead because they kind of we, we say out on the podcast that the Walking Dead news was announced and everybody went, oh, my God, really? I mean, nobody was positive about that at all. And then they then they released the news that Chance was going to be the icon a few days later, just to pick up all the negative, you know, get rid of all the negative news. So uh, yeah, so that will be out when you're listening to this. So if you'd kindly go over and download that as well, Logan, Scott, and I would be really, really appreciative. Thank you. Uh, and that again is Scale Zone podcast. So if we search for that in iTunes or yeah, in all the regular. App, yeah, all of them. Uh, Logan puts it everywhere. And I can say, I can't say too the much. podcast I can say is that we have got some fabulous, exciting guests coming up. So keep with us. I'm excited. It will be a coup, put it that way. Yep. And I can't wait to uh, to be uh, that, that guest. <laughs> That's such a, a good. It's Amanda, yeah. Nick. All right, I can tell the world now. It's Amanda. Well, she's better than me, so it's, well, it's, that's fair enough. Um, so before we crack on, actually, I'm I'm going to go back to what you just saying. So, why were people so negative about The Walking Dead? Are people sick of it already? Yeah, it, it's been at Halloween Horror Nights. This is the fifth year now that it's returned. It's the and biggest show on bloody cable. Why? Do I know, people... I know, I know. The problem is, is they this. I explained this on the podcast that they have a deal whereby. They, they're not allowed to use a lot of the likenesses of the main actors. Right. So when you go into the houses, it is just zombies, pretty much. And although they'll have sets and scenes from various episodes within that season, you can't really get the story or the narrative because there's just zombies coming out at you. And, and the other thing that I like about this, the, 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 some of the people that have been really, really moaning are actually the people that work at Halloween Horror Nights because <laughs> evidently... If you got cast as a walker in the Walking Dead house, you've been cast in the exact same house every year. Uh-huh. And these people are like, I don't want to be a zombie anymore. I want to do something else. So I hear that from zombies so often. <laughs> oh, all the I time. I don't want to be a zombie anymore. Okay, <laughs> I'm not being negative about Walking Dead this year, I've decided. Oh, that's good. I'm going to be positive about it. Because the way that I'm seeing it is if they weren't doing Walking Dead, there'd probably just be eight houses true and if there's nine that means less queuing time for me so i'm happy exactly i i will welcome it with open arms because they're gonna this is probably going to be the last one and they're going to reference every single season and some of the early seasons were a bit bit sort of darker a bit more a bit more horror filmish so i look forward to that like the, the shopping center and the hospital and all that sort of thing so i think i think it will be a good house i'm with you I've got to be honest. I've I I stopped watching at the halfway point of season three because it was just it was season two that they started doing the split seasons, didn't they? Mm. And we watched the first half of season three and was like, yeah, and just didn't have you know like when when they announced it's coming back, I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. To it, I think we was watching the same at the time, but like the the the, the real interest in the, the the gripping nature of it had kind of been lost a bit. But I know a lot of people that just started watching it on um, on on DVDs and Blu-rays and stuff because the box it's now quite cheap to buy, and I'm binging it and I'm enjoying it a lot more. And I think that was it. I think when you're wait when you have a, a, a long wait between seasons of a program, um, you you do have that fear that if you don't do it right, um, if you don't if you don't like you leave a decent enough cliffhanger or something like that, that they might not come back. Um, whilst if you've got a box it, you don't have to worry about that because, oh my god, cliffhanger, put a next disc in. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So, uh, you know, it, it's it's something that I will pick back up on. Um, the, the thing is, a lot of the fans have been moaning, but every year when they have The Walking Dead, they always do something with it that's a bit different to the other houses. Mm. So, for example, they had one, one year it was the biggest house they'd ever built. You know, it was twice the size um, of a regular house, and they'd had 
twice as many actors in there. Um, and then they did another first um, for the next year, which I can't remember. Then they did last year. It was the tallest and the most detailed sets ever. And then this year, from what I've been told, um, it's going to be the most um, horrific house they've ever built for The Walking Dead. Wow. So, oh, The Walking Dead. Okay. Uh, yeah. So they're, they're going out with a bang. Mm. Okay. Okay. Well, let's see what they do then. It's uh, be interesting. Um, anyway, as I said, this is Disaster Dark. Not that you've known it tonight. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to pick on Amanda. Okay. Did you had something you wanted to talk about. Yeah, so as of just a couple of days ago, actually, you can now get dining slash parade packages with Tony's Town Square Restaurant for the Main Street Electrical Parade, wow. which is pretty cool. So you'll get a three-course lunch, so it's a lunch menu. And then you'll get priority viewing of the Main Street Electrical Parade from just near the flag on Main Street. So you get a good view, but it's $45 for lunch. And I feel like I personally wouldn't pay $45 for my lunch, but if I really wanted to see the Electrical Parade, I think I might. So hang on, it's lunch, but lunch. but it's the electrical parade. So how does that work? Yeah. So you have to you go and for your lunch, and then I think that they must give you a ticket or something, or they put something on your magic band for you to then go back much later on in the evening to watch it. Right. Okay. That, that I don't know anyone like that's been yet, so I don't know too much. And how much is Tony's normally? How much is what? Sorry. How much is Tony's normally? So, obviously, this is a premium event. It's forty-five dollars for lunch, but do we know how much a lunch would normally cost there? Not forty-five dollars. I mean, I'm guessing that it's so much because you're going to get it as three courses. But I guess if you're just going for a regular lunch, you'd probably just get like your main meal, wouldn't you? I don't think you'd bother with like an appetizer, your main, and then dessert. The thing is, though, wasn't Tony's voted the worst restaurant in Walt Disney World? I feel like, yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I've, I've never been in there just because everyone says it's so terrible. It's so well, terrible. What I like about it is it is actual Italian food. It doesn't lie to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I'll tell you what my problem is with it, with it as it stands at least, is that when we... Well, we've gone because of how, and I mean, we go in October, September, October time. So it's it's not the the peak heat season of the summer, but it's still really good weather, really hot weather. Um, and to be honest, we normally have a, like a fairly decent breakfast, fairly big breakfast, and we might have a snack during the day. Yeah. But I wouldn't want to have, I, I probably wouldn't sit down for lunch, and I definitely would not want to sit down for a three course lunch no well that that's what i feel like the problem with this is going to be mm. is that i don't think many people will and i think that's where it might struggle that is that is odd it does seem at the moment that they're chucking out a lot of stuff just to see what actually sticks yeah it, it's like they don't quite know how to make a bit more money it's like no. they tried with these these extra hours didn't they mm. well i was gonna Which say is... thanks to our lawyers They've called off the After Dark, haven't they? Yeah. <laughs> you know, we did send a cease and desist because of them using our name in vain. Um, but yeah, that that quietly got cancelled, didn't it? Yeah, I did see quite a few people on YouTube and Twitter and stuff like that that were absolutely raving about it. But it was for what it was, I think it was really expensive, and it was only a few hours. The rumor I heard was. Yeah. The I rumor I heard was that they were giving it away to DVC members. Because really? they couldn't sell the tickets. So DVC <laughs> members that were booking into their room were being given these extra hours. Because <laughs> the they is, weren't selling the tickets. The thing is, though, it's stupid because we're so conditioned by Disney to book so much in advance, you know, ADRs and fast passes and all the other jargon and blah, blah, blah. Book, 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 book ahead. Why have a, a special event that's announced within a week, starts in a few days, 
and then be surprised that nobody turns up. Exactly. You know, if they said to you, right, this is happening in October, they probably get people probably get people there. But this reminds me a little bit of that frozen dinner. Do you remember that frozen dinner they were doing in Disneyland Paris? Where they announced it like about three weeks before and it was going to be 200 euros for the night each. Oh, wow. Well, this is the thing. And the, the, the thing, the, like, what they were basically selling it on the pretense was you would be able to meet the cast of Fro, you know, like Anna, Elsa. Um, I don't know if Olaf was going to be there, but, you know, you'd certainly at least meet the princesses. Um, of Frozen, and Disneyland Paris, it wasn't obviously that easy to do. So um, it was their it was their way of chancing it. Now the problem I have with all of these things is it, it's obviously there to set a precedent. So like this um, after hours thing that they were trying to do, if that had worked, if they'd sold tickets, how long before that was made a regular thing? You know, um, and, and same with this here. You know, the the you know, whilst it's a good idea in principle, and I I get why people might like it. At the same time, if it was successful, how long until the only way to see the Main Street Electrical Parade is by doing a, a lunch deal or doing a, 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 a you know however they want to do it? But basically, yeah. turning around and saying it's not a case now of how early you queue if you want to have a spot on the parade route, you know, front row or whatever, you need to have had uh, Disney dining. Well, that's it. And I mean, there was talk a few months ago, wasn't there, where they were, there was rumours that they were going to start having people pay for priority viewing of the parades and of wishes and things like that. Hey, let me and... see. This is, this is the dark side of Disney right here. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't pay extra money. I'd be happy to just stand at the back. <laughs> <It's been laughs> I wouldn't see anything. But if you're watching fireworks, I don't think it matters where you stand. No, no, pretty much not. Um, it's different for things like dreams or if they're projecting stuff on a castle. But no, I agree with you on, on standard fireworks. Um, but the problem is, Amanda, like, you know, you've been quite lucky and most of the people on here, i.e. one, not me, um, are being able to go and visit on multiple occasions but if you're the family that this is a once in a lifetime holiday and it is going to literally be not like how most of us are where it's a once in a lifetime holiday which becomes your favourite holiday and you keep doing it and doing it and doing it but if this is a once in a lifetime thing and you know you're not going to come back you're like well if I don't do that we're going to miss out I think that's really harsh. Exactly. But but the thing is, there will be people where that will be the case. Exactly. Um, and and that's what they're kind of hoping for, really, I suppose. Or yeah. those fans that don't care about how much money they spend, because, you know, they have those as well. Exactly. I mean, personally, now, I think, because I have been so many times, if there's a parade on, I kind of watch it while I'm walking. But I get that people do. They'll sit on that curb for hours and hours and hours in the absolute blister and heat just to make sure that they can see it. And I think the idea of charging people for that makes me very sad. Yeah. Hashtag, and the fact that, thank like you, Chris Shanghai. said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Speak. But going back to what Chris said about this being voted like the worst restaurant, like you wouldn't usually pay $45. And I do think that it is just to try and charge people to watch the Main Street Electrical Parade. No. I, as sad I, I, as that seems. Yeah. Chris, going back to your, your hashtag there, have yeah. you seen the latest thing that's affected the uh, the Thanks Shanghai? No. Um, Derek Bergen. Um, oh, what's he done? <laughs> he took a I'll, picture. He took yeah. a picture inside the call station. The cool station, the the uh, what was it called? The uh, the Coke zone or whatever. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know Napcot. Yeah. yeah, and all the drinks are out. Oh no. Yeah, e- even Beverly. <laughs> even Beverly. Who's drinking that rubbish? <laughs> Italians. <laughs> Italians. Hey, we they, get this crap back home. They <laughs> serve it. They serve it at Tony's. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> no one goes there. Someone, someone, go and find out for his place. Um, actually, saying that, they definitely didn't serve that in Via Napoli. 
when I was there. I had a terrible beer there, but I definitely mm. didn't. I didn't, definitely didn't see Beverly on the menu. Um, <laughs> yes. So uh, yeah, that's the latest uh, casualty, which we're blaming Shanghai for. Is is no Beverly at the uh, the coat bit, um, Mr. Washington? Yeah. There was something you uh, wanted to talk about. Yep. Uh, our next story: um, Typhoon Lagoon. Um, of putting planning application to build a new ride. <gasps> Yay! Bum, bum, bum. Um, setting about two acres of extra land to the north of the park, they're going to be building a family-style raft ride, um, which should be interesting. It sounds a bit like a like one of the lazy rivers, but in a in a raft with some paddles. Not quite sure where they're going with it. Not a lot's come out of, about it yet. Um, just that obviously that the planning application has gone in with the the water board, um, and and that's really about it. I don't know whether anybody else has heard anything more about it. I, I just I'm just struck dumb by the fact that they said the headline had new ride coming to Walt Disney World. <laughs> <laughs> because... Do you think is this April Fool's Day? Well, this, this is it. All we ever get is rehabs and you know rehashes. So, do you, I mean, because there's been rumours that they're going to be closing a water park. I've been hearing that quite a lot. Which which one? Well, no, that's the thing. Just just that they were well, going to close one. Well, I guess we'll close the beach now. Well, that's it. If they're, if they're expanding on Typhoon Lagoon, it's not going to be Typhoon Lagoon that's going. But there was a rumour that they were going to close Blizzard Beach. Really? Hmm. Do you oh, think so, they so might one be... Of the, one of the water parks, at least. Yeah. So, it would make sense if that's the one. I don't understand why, if they were, because isn't Blizzard Beach the newest one? Yeah, it is. Yeah. I think it opened just because they. I think they opened quite near to each other, didn't they? It, like in in years time terms, not not distance. Typhoon's um, definitely older. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> so it would surprise me, but at the same time, if I mean the thing is, it, it, they may have changed their mind. You know what Dizzy are like? We don't always know this stuff, do we? But. Um, yeah, there were certainly rumours going around that they were looking to close one of the water parks. Um, maybe fearing a, a bit of competition from Universal. I don't know. Um, but, yeah. I mean, if that is the case, it's, it, you wouldn't expect it to be Typhoon Lagoon anymore. I think they'll be daft if they close one. Because mm. in, the in the height of the summer, they get so packed. And imagine all these people going to just one. All these people that get it free with the Disney tickets. Yeah, I mean, I've got to be honest. Um, I can tell this story because she won't listen. It's fine. Um, but we went the... I think it was... Must have been the second time we went when we was on our honeymoon. And um, my wife at the time had red hair. And, um, you know, I had to, you know, as anyone that's ever had red hair knows, it takes a lot of maintenance because red's a really bad colour for hair. Um, and so she was, she was kind of topping it up while we were there. Anyway, one day we went to uh, one of the parks first thing in the morning, um, the one with the Lazy River. They've both got Lazy Rivers? Just one of them? Yeah. Both have. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I, I don't really like water slides myself. I'm not, I'm not a massive fan. Not of, uh, like, Summit Plummet. Um, I don't mind some of the smaller ones, but that just has no appeal to me at all. So um, I said, look, I'm going to go on Lazy River. You go up on that and I'll, um, you know, I'll, I'll have a poodle around on that and then I'll come meet at the bottom. Um, anyway, did that, managed to, to kind of get there before she'd, she'd gone down. And um, as she come down the slide and as she entered like the plunge bit, so did a lot of red dye. Oh no! So uh, yeah, I mean her hair wasn't too bad to be to be fair, but it was more the colour it was changing the pool, so we kind of made our excuse on the left. Um, <laughs> but just 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 something to bear in mind uh, if, if anyone's doing that. This um, is starting to sound like my news story now. <laughs> Why is that? Well, you'll find out in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> just just something to bear in mind if you if you're going to uh, any any water park and you've just done something to your hair, is it might not hold but uh, there you go so go on mr ripley well my news story I, I struggle to find any disney news that's happened in the last fortnight but um supposedly reports are coming out of a um uh, a guy that was once a, a lifeguard at storm along bay he reckons that in the late 90s um leonardo dicaprio 
was staying at the yacht club, which I've said on this podcast before, that's where they usually put the, mm. the celebrities. And he's written this quite detailed, long account how he had to um, allegedly apprehend Mr. DiCaprio, who was a bit worse for wear, alcohol-wise, um, in Stormalong Bay. And he, he allegedly urinated down the main slide. <laughs> <laughs> so they threw him out. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. So it's not just your wife, you know, this happens to... Well, hang on, let me just point out, if she does listen to this podcast, I wasn't insinuating she, she urinated anywhere. Um, <laughs> just in case, just going to cover my back. Um, as her back was covered uh, herself. Um, that's that's quite interesting, though. And I mean, the thing is, like, it's a, it's a little bit, reminds me a little bit of that story about uh, Bill Murray. Oh, seeing, yeah. Seeing the Blake's McDonald's. Mm. Like, where it's, it's, so, it's not far-fetched enough that it may not be true. Mm. You know, like it, it's not it's not a ludicrous claim because when you're drunk, you do do stupid stuff, don't you? Gen- generally, yeah. um, not always, but, you know, most of the time I I when I was at one of my most drunkenest um, periods of my life um, in a few short hours, I was in a, a Vegas nightclub that had a pool that was closed, but I still went in it, fully clothed, baptised myself in it, not even religious. Um, <laughs> so, you know, people do crazy stuff when they're drunk with uh, with water. Um, and some people get drunk and then record podcasts about Disney World. <laughs> that does happen as well, okay, <laughs> on, on occasion, on occasion. Um, it's not even that strong. I think I've just not had beer for a while. Um <laughs> But yeah, I, that's a cracking story. I love that, mm. and and also as well, I believe it. Yeah, as well. It, the, supposedly, what why people are believing the story is he's written quite a lengthy account, and it, it kind of everything he's saying kind of makes sense. It all all sounds like the late nineties at the yacht club. So right, okay. Because yeah. talking about celebrities in Disney, did you hear that Daniel Radcliffe's in Disneyland Paris at the moment? Is he? Hmm. Wow. Really? Mm. Did not know that. Yeah. Yeah. What, on vacation, to the or? dark side. <laughs> or was he just hard up and he's starring in the latest Animagique or something? Yeah, he's actually auditioning for uh, Mickey's uh, magical <laughs> lamp thing. What's it called? We should know that, yeah. really, shouldn't we? It's pretty bad. Magical hat or something? <laughs> Whatever. Mag- Ma- Mickey's magical show. In the Animagique Theatre. I think that's quite nice. They call it they they call it the Animagique Theatre. But I see what actually what's interesting about that, if anyone figures out what it's actually called, because I can't bother to look for it, um, is that in the press releases for it, because it, it's opening shortly, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's uh, I think there's previews scheduled for the end of the month for um, pass holders, but um, I think it opens early July. Um, is the fact that they've announced it will be open till um, at least January. Oh. Now, when they launched Dreams, that was also under a similar guise of it would be open till at least September. When it launched in April, it would be on to at least September. And obviously that date kept getting extended, 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 extended. Um so I'm not really sure. I don't. I've not read too much into it, to be honest, because it would seem really odd to close a long-running show, replace it with a brand new production that you've, you know, created. It's not taken from any other park. It's going to be another, um, as Anima Anima G was a unique attraction, um, or, or show, and and replace it seven months later. It seems like an awful lot of expense for no reason. Well, they're going to get in trouble if Florida finds out about that because they can barely keep the uh, gas bill paid. <laughs> thanks, Shanghai. <laughs> Hashtag Shang- thanks, Shanghai. Um, there was one other thing that I think we should... Um, we found to talk about it, um, and it has been going around for the last few weeks, and it is Disney-related, so that's good. Um 
what is everybody's opinion of that thing they call a dull whip? I love dull whips. Absolutely love them. Dull whip floats. And they're amazing. Okay. Chris, Paul? I'm not a fan. I have to be honest. Controversial. Mm. No, they're just they're just a little bit too sweet for me. I'm kind of like I'd rather just have a normal ice cream. But they need some rum in it or something, don't they? Or... Well, they do them at the Polynesian, don't they? Do they? I'm excited. Yeah. What alcoholic Dole Whip? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, at least they did for a while when Trader Sam- before Trader Sam's was open. They did. I don't know whether they still do now. Now they've got the bar back, but well, they, just they certainly just to, did. Just to spur off of that point just very very quickly the polling for the ultimate resort um, oh good segue yeah it doesn't finish till next week obviously you've still got time to vote but at the moment the poly is way out in front so if you want any of the other resorts to win then get on there and vote otherwise the Polynesians are going to romp home like it so, but no, I, I, I did not know that. So that's another reason to vote for the Polynesia. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I mean, I'd, I'd never tried one. I'd never heard, um, I never heard of the hype about them until I started listening to Disney podcasts. Funny enough, actually. Um, and so I've not been back to try one. But people seem to be absolutely obsessed with them. Absolutely obsessed with them. Um, and Disneyland Paris have finally launched. A, a version now when it was first kind of rumoured it was coming it was DLP gets dull whips hmm. but it's not actually the case they're pineapple whips uh. so they're similar but they're not exactly the same just black versions well <laughs> there's a few things here the first one is people were questioning and we don't know the answers to this so like it's not common knowledge so i don't think anyone can answer this it's not just that we're lazy um is the fact they're not dull whips now from what i have been able to find out myself yeah i did a bit of research um i couldn't find dull as a brand being sold in france hmm now, my research is purely based on looking on two French supermarket websites, but <laughs> that's more research than I could have done. Um, but like, it d- doesn't appear that the brand is is kind of um, used in France, which is quite common. You know, that does happen. Um, I mean, guys, I'm sure you all remember Gino Ginelli ice cream. Yes, and the man from Del Monte. Tutti Frutti, what a cutie. Now... T- Gino Gianelli ice cream, we've not had over here since, well, actually, Boston, I oh, man, I don't think he was born. Uh, Probably not. No. <laughs> it was about 92, 93, so. You know, was. Yeah, yeah, but very young. Very young still. <laughs> really? Um, but you can still buy Gino Gianelli in South Africa. Wow. For example. Right? Like today, you can do that. So, you know, what tends to happen is certain brand names don't get used in certain countries for whatever reason. So Dole will have an equivalent or, or whatever in France. But I couldn't find any use of Dole in France. So I think that's potentially why um, it, it's not a Dole whip uh, as it was. Now, I, I can't really see, from what I've seen it described as, I can't really myself see the difference between a Dole whip and a pineapple, a pineapple whip other than... The, like the branding and, and possibly how it's served um and people are going absolutely crazy about it uh in fact i, I upset somebody on twitter during the um imdo recording <laughs> of a podcast because i i dared say that i thought he was being rude about his opinion of europeans and their um, usage of snacks um, he didn't like the fact that i called him out on it um he also didn't I tried to explain my my um, my issue with it. He didn't really have a response to it, so I'm not sure where that goes. But anyway, um, but I, yeah, I, I just don't I don't get it. And I think the the problem I've had with the the kind of uproar about it is that with Disneyland Paris, a lot of people that go to Disneyland Paris don't actually go to other Disney parks. So I, I think, of course, there is a 
a community of people that will go to Florida, will go to Disneyland, California, will go to Tokyo, will go to Shanghai, obviously won't go to Hong Kong. But, um, you know, will go to other parts and will have different experiences and might have their own things, their own opinions on things like this. But for the average Disneyland Paris visitor, they couldn't give a toss. Ah. They couldn't. Why would they give a toss? <laughs> Why? It, if you, if you, like, there must be a huge population of people that go to Disneyland Paris that don't leave Europe, that don't go to those American parks. So if you give them a pineapple whip, they'll be happy they've got a pineapple whip. What if you give them Heston Blumenthal's um, snails ice cream? Well, obviously, uh, escargot ice cream in, in France is very popular. Mm. Uh, it's third behind rum and raisin and pistachio because they're weird. Um, <laughs> but, um, you, you, you Just so anyone's clear, we are allowed to be racist towards the French. That is fine. Um, well, possibly in two weeks' time. <laughs> yes, moment, yes, probably definitely. still a little bit come see, come yeah. saw. But um, yeah, once we're we all go out, yeah, we'll be fine. I have no <laughs> idea what you're talking about. Snail ice cream. Oh, we're talking about football. Well, England England will be backed. The England team won't have actually done postal votes. Let's say that. They'll be back before that polling happens. I'll tell you for Brexit. They'll be well back before that, following last night's performance. Um, But yeah, I just, I think people are being far, far too critical about it. I get it if it upsets your perfect opinion of what a dull whip is because of your experience in America. I get it's not the same thing. But they're not calling it a dull whip if it's slightly different. They are calling it something else. And I just... Oh, it makes me mad. There we go. Would you like um, to Soapbox! The, yeah. <laughs> soapbox. Thanks, thanks, Shanghai Soapbox. Um, <laughs> yeah, I just... I, just I, I, I don't get it. You can still, it, it's basically my argument with people with this is a bit like people that get upset about the new Ghostbusters. Mm. The old Ghostbusters is still there. You can still watch it, no one's taking that away. The fact that they're remaking it with women is neither here nor there. It's a completely different film. No one is taking away Ghostbusters from you. Some people were upset about Chance. Really? How dare they? I know. I mean, they're like, oh, how can we have a female icon? It's like we've had umpteen female icons in the past. Just yeah. because Ghostbusters is on at the moment, you know, it doesn't mean we should never have a female icon. And, and Hillary's kind of on hating on girls. Oh, God knows. It's well, not we like don't. it's the first time we've had a female icon, is it? Oh, they've had stacks like Bloody Mary and um, the, the, the storyteller. Uh, the storyteller, yeah. Lady, Lady Luck. Luck, you know. That is weird. I mean, you tell me what gender the Crypt Keeper is. I don't know. Crypt Keeper? <laughs> yeah. I, I think he's more masculine than feminine. Maybe I'm know. wrong. I don't know. It's a good one. But we do like women. We do like women on this podcast. I mean, obviously, Amanda's just joined the team. We're very pleased to have her. Um, and also, that brings us up to our uh, our second sponsor. Oh, he's Seamless. good, he? He's good. He's good. Seamless. And who is our who is our second sponsor? I hear you cry. You Wendy. Know by now. Wendy Pratter at Magical Journeys Travel. Of course. And if you mention us, you'll get a nice twenty five dollars off your deposit of any trip package. So tell us that uh, that we sent you. Uh, and you can find her on Twitter at WP Magic Journeys or WPMagicJourneys.com. And she won't be charging you extra money to book at Tunnies to get a decent view for uh, electrical parade stuff. I think I can say that. I guess you won't mind me saying that. Um, but yeah, so that's Wendy. Um, yeah, so I don't, I don't get the chance thing either. I think it's quite, uh, quite sad. But anyway, it's like people need something to moan about, isn't it? You know, female yes. Ghostbusters. You know, uh, doll whips. I mean. <laughs> No, honestly, I've got no problem with female Ghostbusters as long as they're funny, which those four aren't. Yeah, well, no. <laughs> see, you know what? I uh, hello and welcome to Ghostbusters After Dark. Um, <laughs> having seen the trailers, and we are having to gauge this on trailers because no one's seen the finished film because it's not finished yet. Um, I like. I think individually, 
and outs- on other projects, all four of those women are funny. I just feel with that script and the jokes they put in the trailer and the laziness of it all that it doesn't work. That's it. I was actually, I, was, I can't say I was excited by it, but when everyone was hating on the fact that they were going to reboot Ghostbusters with women, I was like, no, let's let's see. You know, it's got good, you know, good cast behind it, and you know, good credentials. I quite quite there, quite like uh, Paul Feig's other stuff. I watched Spy the other night. Has anyone seen Spy? No. Oh. It's uh, if you've got Sky or Now TV, it's on that now. And um, I mean, to be fair, although it's it's quite good. Jason Statham is by far the best thing in it. He's hilarious, um, but it was it was a reasonably entertaining film. It was you know funny enough for a comedy. It's not a classic, but as modern day comedies goes, it, you know it was pretty decent. Um, but this new Ghostbusters just doesn't look funny. The thing is, though, was the original Ghostbusters laugh out loud all the way through? No, it's not a comedy. You know what I mean? It wasn't. It wasn't. People call it a comedy, but I don't. I don't see it as a comedy. I see no. it as an action film with comedy, you know, moments. But it's I think not people comedy. saw it that way because it was the cast was comedians. Yeah, yeah, and if you think, you know, really, if you look at it now, you know, um, but it was Saturday Night Live. Yeah, weren't they? Most of the, you know, Bill Murray and Dan Aykroyd were from Saturday Night Live. Um, Harold Ramis was behind National Lampoons for a while, um, or come from that background. So there was that comedy background between them. Most of this cast of Ghostbusters have come from Saturday Night Live. Again, so you can see where history's kind of repeated itself. The, but... the thing is, at the moment, when when you go onto IMDb, is Hollywood is just filled with sequels, sequels, remakes, remakes. You know, and it, it seems like they've run out of ideas and they're just trying to, because um, they're saying that cinema receipts year on year are getting less and less and less and less. So they mm. seem to be sort of desperate for anything. Mm. And when you start messing with classics, you know, and a lot of people hold that film really dear to them. Hi, this is Nick, aka Soap This from Disaster Dark. We had a little bit of an issue with the ending of the recording, uh, you may have noticed there. So we've had to start recording again from that point where we lost the audio and um, try to seamlessly pick up where we left off. So hopefully it's not too jarring for you and you can enjoy the last few minutes of the podcast. Cheers. The fact that um, when you look at what's being made come, going forward in, in Hollywood... Yeah. Um, it, it's all sequels and rehashes, yeah. You know, and remakes of this, remakes of that. I mean, I, there's even they're even writing the script at the moment for the remake of the birds. Why are they remaking what? the birds? Well, well suppose, but the, the thing is, everyone's saying that cinema receipts year on year um, in Europe and in America are down. Yeah. And the public seem to only be responding to sequels and remakes. But you know, original true. stuff is just not it's just not happening supposedly the thing is though right i know what you're saying there but let's look at the like the these examples okay so um right alice in wonderland sequel flopped yeah turtles 2 sequel flopped yeah bad neighbors 2 sequel Flopped. We could take a guess what happened to that, yeah. <laughs> Zoolander 2. <laughs> Zoolander 2 flopped massively. Well, Did Zoolander it? 2 came out in February. I mean, and also the first one, um, I mean, the first one, to be fair, came out like a week after September 11th, so it was never going to do that well. Comedy in America uh, at that time of, uh, of uh, what was going on at the time wasn't really ideal. But um, the thing is... I... They obviously think that's the case, but it's it's clearly not. I mean, I think the biggest hell, I think, will be when Avatar, if it ever gets filmed, <laughs> those sequels. Because obviously, you know, they are, I think... I, somebody... I, I've got to check, but um, apparently, if inflation is adjusted, Avatar's no longer the biggest film. No. Mm. I don't think I don't think it ever has been, has it? Yeah, no, no. Avatar was. Avatar was. 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Gone gone With the Wind historically was, if you uh, change inflation, it, it was. But um, I think Avatar might have been knocked down by one of the Avenger films. Um, I have to check that out. But, um, you know, at the moment, as it stands, if you look at it today, then, then Avatar's still the biggest film ever. Um, and so for that, you would then expect Avatar 2 um, to, to, like, do at least... What three quarters of the same business, and I I don't think it will. Well, I'm on IMDb Pro right now, and it says that Universal, for example, I picked on Universal, mm-hmm. has got 370 films currently in development. Jeez, so that's that's script, that's pitches, that's all that kind of stuff. And then on top of that, they've got 24 films right now that they're filming. You know, and going down the list, you got remake. Sequel, 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 a new film, a new film, a new film, a new film, sequel, 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 remake, sequel, sequel, a new film, sequel, 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 a new film, sequel, sequel. So that is that that was the lion's share with sequels there, wasn't it? Yeah. And I mean, the thing is, like, of all the films, so I haven't seen the Avengers, uh, sorry. I haven't seen Captain America 3, Civil War. Uh, I haven't seen Alice. Um, I haven't seen the other sequels that I mentioned there either. The the only film at this moment in time that I'd want to go to cinema, and I actually do want to go and see this at the cinema, um, is The Good Guys. Is it called The Good Guys? Oh, um... No, I think it's called The Good Guys. Uh, with uh, Ryan Gosling Russell Crow. and Russell yeah. Crowe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, because I like Shane Black's work, and it was something original. And the thing is, like people like you know Shane Black's only got this gig because of um, Iron Man Three doing so well. He's kind of got carte blanche to to do whatever he wanted to do. But um, it's an original property in a summer where everything is an adaption, a remake, or a sequel. I can't think of anything else coming out this summer that is like that. Oh, uh, Do you want me to look up Silver Disney Clark on IMDb? Pods. No, thank you. <laughs> we know where that story's <laughs> going to go. But saying that, I just um, today watched Zootopia, or Zootropolis, depending on what part of the world you live in, for the first time. Oh, yeah. Time. I actually really enjoyed it. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, and that's... that's um, I mean, Disney have already broken... Uh, I can't remember what figure they've broken this year, but I think it might be t- uh, two billion or two and a half billion already this year. So even though Alice has, has flopped, it's all good because everything <laughs> else is overachieved. Yeah. So it's doing it's doing all right. It's doing all right. But um, yeah. So yeah, Ghostbusters not uh, <laughs> not bothered. <laughs> Going back to what we were talking about originally. Um, mm. Anyway, I think I think we we can probably leave it there. Um, but uh, thank you, Amanda. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Chris, for uh, being on the show uh, and and making it entertaining because I wouldn't have been able to done it by myself. <laughs> and thank you, dear listener, for downloading. Um, we've still got a week to go for voting in the hotels. Yeah, as we mentioned. Uh, as I said, Polly is way out in front. So if you want to stop the Polly, hashtag stop the Polly. <laughs> and thank you, Shanghai. Um, you can do it. Only you can do it. That's dear right. listener. Oh, and where can they do that? Of course, uh, it's our Facebook page, which is facebook.com forward slash disafterdark. Um, I will put a link up. Um, oh, that means I'll have to write a blog. Oh, dear. I have to write a blog post. Craig will be impressed. Um, <laughs> so I've got something on the blog, which is uh, disafterdark.com. Um, or you can, that will take you there, or um, officially it's uh, disafterdark.blogspot.co.uk, but either one will take you to the correct page. Um, and of course, we've still got the unofficial Dad's Army. That's not the TV show, that's the other one. If you see our picture, you know it's us. Um, so come join us there, secret listeners. Um, we're doing a lot of stuff. We, we, we've done a few previews this week, haven't we? Of uh, up and coming bits and bobs. Mm. So they're getting the first dibs on all of that stuff. Um, 
and uh, you also get to vote on this show as well and the content at least some of it I mean you, you can't vote off which member you don't like the most otherwise I'd have been gone but um, <laughs> but other stuff so please get involved by visiting us there and um, I suppose all that's left to say is we'll see you um, in a week's time with uh, the results show we might be doing a universal show oh in between yeah this possibly week. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. So the next thing on the feed, I mean, if you if you subscribe to us, please do subscribe to us if you don't, because one, it makes us look good in iTunes, uh, but secondly, it means you don't miss anything. So sometimes we might drop um, a little show like uh, Craig did last week, actually, didn't he? Where he's doing. Yeah. So um, you you know you won't get those if you haven't subscribed. So please do, um, and you'll get every show that we release including uh, as as chris said there are universal after dark shows um which contain a hundred percent less me so already <laughs> people are, are preferring those shows it's, 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 <laughs> you're welcome to come it, on the universal show anytime you want nick well it's it's tragic to the ego um and i think we should give the people what they want um so l- let's not invite me on too early <laughs> <laughs> it's a cracking show and um yes yeah, so I'll, I'll look forward to that especially if you do um we won't spoil anything but there are some new additions to that show not me um so that, you've got that to look forward to when it comes out so um thank you again the world's longest outro and uh yeah we'll see you in a few days at the very latest next week you can say bye now Bye. Bye now. <laughs> Cheery bye. <laughs> this podcast is part of the After Dark Podcast. Network.